patch notes. That's right, the patch notes are here. So we are gonna go through all of the big changes in 1.13 in Vault Hunters, and you can see just how much it's gonna affect you. Spoilers, it'll be a lot. So let's just jump in with the first change, crystals. So co-op crystals no longer exist, and all of your crystals can now be run as solo or co-op vaults. So if we create our own party here, and we invite our community manager Marie to the party. When we go up to the portal, again with our normal crystal, activate it and enter. There we go. Both of us have entered into a vault. An absolutely brilliant change, which is gonna make co-op play so much easier. No more waiting around for co-op vaults and anything like that. Now, once you're actually in the vault, there's a few items that no longer work. First one being, spawn eggs. Now you can click as much as you want on spawn eggs, they're not gonna spawn within the vaults. No more cheesing your Idona altars or your scavenger vaults. The thing I'm most upset about, destruction and copy and paste gadgets. You can go around, attempt to click things and it will just not delete it. So rip to ICC vaults and dig site rooms. You're gonna have to use something else like a mining gadget or something like that, but it's not nearly as fun. Item routers, also banned, and any form of conveyor belt, whether that's create conveyor belts, immersive engineering conveyor belts, any of those, all will immediately disappear upon being placed. All of this just seems like an attempt to reduce soul shard farming, but who knows? Now there's also been some pretty big milestone changes when opening the vault, specifically around level 25 and level 75. So when you hit vault level 25, you can now unlock tier two positive abilities. Now this vault has optimistic, which is the tier two version of extended. Now you can get all of the positive modifiers from tier two at level 25, but you can't get any of the negative ones until you hit level 75. So you've basically got a free boost to your loot between levels 25 and 75. There's also been a change to the catalyst recipe. Catalysts now require six catalyst fragments instead of the five, two perfect Beniatite as before, but instead of two perfect Laramar, you've got a perfect Alexandrite. Now this is gonna really open up Catalyst's early game because Laramar is a little bit of a problem. However, later game, you normally don't struggle with Laramar in the slightest, and it's the Catalyst fragments that cause issues, which means that later game, you're actually gonna be running less Catalysts rather than more. So a little bit of an oversight, I think it would have been better as an alternative recipe, but that's what we've got to deal with going forwards. Now there's also been some abilities that have changed as well. The two biggest ones are Shaman and Execute. So on the surface of it, Shaman looks exactly like it did before. However, that couldn't be further from the truth. Now, every time you attack a boss, instead of it stacking the damage over time, it will actually just refresh the initial damage over time. Okay, so we summon the boss behind us and I'm gonna show you how the new Shaman works. Now we have got strength one on here and this is a smite five sword. So just factor that in as well. So if we walk up to the boss, we activate Shaman and then we hit it once, you will see we are doing 10 damage, then 11 damage, and it is slowly chunking away. If you repeatedly hit it, previously, all of the stacks would carry on. Now, if you hit it before the first damage tick, it doesn't actually do any damage at all, and the boss will stay at full health. And if you continuously stack them, it's now just doing ticking four damage. So it actually seems like it does less damage the more you hit it. So basically hit it once, run away, and then find a different way to attack the boss once that shaman has run out. Now a much easier way to kill a boss is gonna be to use the new execute ability. Now this execute ability has been reworked massively. It's now only got five ranks instead of the 10 it had before, and the cost is only six points to completely max it out with no level requirements. However, same as before, if you hit level 50, you can spec into precision or you can spec into combo. So then you're getting the either chance of not consuming it or you're doing a percentage of missing health. So what you're gonna to wanna to do with bosses now is just chunk them down just normally using your normal sword. If you wanna speed it up, you can use a power bar and then just chunk them down a little bit quicker. And then once they get to about half health, then hit execute and the boss is dead. It's gonna be a lot slower than Shaman, but it's gonna get the job done at the end of the day. 
The next change is all to do with Eternals. Previously with Summon Eternals, you could have a maximum of five Eternals using normal Summon Eternal. Now you are capped at three. So even if you max out Summon Eternals, you are only gonna get three Eternals. Now, if you spec into army, that does increase to five at 10th level, but that does require 46 points invested when previously that was just the default. Now, previously, if you had Eternals out and your ability came off cooldown, you could summon some more. However, now you are actually capped. So even if you've got 100 Eternals out, you can only summon three at a time, abs an absolute maximum, and maximum of five if you've got army. Now that is a huge change in how Eternals work and nerfs the commander builds basically into the ground. It's gonna be very, very, very hard for you to run an effective Eternals build now. Now, since you clicked on the video, you're gonna know exactly what the last change is and that's the introduction of the final vault. So what you're gonna to need to do is to create the final vault frame and you're gonna need one of these for each person that enters your vault. You need to get your 25 artifacts, put them on a grid and blow them up with some TNT. That's not a joke, genuinely thought it was when they first released it, but there you go, that's how you get the frame. Now, once you've got that, you wanna put a vault rock onto an altar and then use a pog on it. And that will allow you to use one of each of the god idols to make a final vault crystal. Stick that into your portal with the frame, hop in, and you get access to this amazing room. And this is the final vault. You can think of it as four different vaults altogether. You have Idona there, Tenos there, Valera there, and Wendar here. And each one of these gives you a different challenge that you need to complete. Now, I'm not going to spoil that for you because I want you to run it yourself. I will release a guide full of spoilers at a later date, but for now, go in, test it yourself. It's a lot of fun. I will say the introduction of the final vault is incredible. There's some fantastic changes in this patch. There are some less fantastic ones, but you know, on the whole, not the worst thing in the world. So gather your artifacts, jump in the final vault, give it all a go, and let me know how you do. Thanks for watching everyone. This has been my brief patch notes guys. If you want me to release more in the future, let me know. Thanks for watching. I've been Hellfire Mage, and I'll see you next time. Oh, and for those of you that have stuck around till the end of the video, and have been wondering, what's this really cool world that you're running around in? Well, this is our new community server. We've been setting it up for the past few weeks and it is really exciting because today is the day that we finally get to open it. Now you can get access to this as part of the channel memberships perks. We've just released a new level which has access to the server and we've already got a bunch of people that have requested access to it. So if you want to support the channel and you want to play Vault Hunters with me and a bunch of the awesome members of our community, then make sure to check out the link in the description down below. That'll give you access. You'll need to join our Discord and then you'll get automatic access to all the information you need. And once we whitelist you, then you can join us. So if that's something that you're interested in, check out the link down below and I will see you on the server.